Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. I want to begin with some very intriguing updates for the RTX 40 series of graphics cards from NVIDIA. Not only are we going to be discussing the fact that the RTX 4090 is nowhere close yet to being optimized in performance, and that 19,000 uh, times by extreme score that we saw just a few days ago is actually just a small sample of what these cards can offer. But I also want to discuss a possibility of a Titan variant, which is something that I've been told just recently. We're going to be discussing an Intel Arc refresh and some other bits and pieces as well. There's a lot of stuff to get through here, and we're going to get right into it after this message from the video's sponsor. Before we continue, I want to take a moment to thank today's sponsor, Crypto.com. Crypto.com is a centralized exchange where you can buy and sell 250 plus cryptocurrencies with 0% fee crypto trading. They also offer a crypto visa debit card, which allows up to 5% cash back on purchases. And other nice perks like having access to airport lounges, access to Netflix, Amazon Prime, Spotify, and more. As well as all of the buying and selling features where you can buy a true card cost. Crypto.com also offers services like trading and staking to earn additional revenue on your investments. You can also grow your portfolio by receiving rewards up to 14.5% on your crypto assets. Join 50 million plus users buying and selling 250 plus cryptocurrencies using our referral link, crypto.com slash app slash redgamingtech, which you can also find linked in the video description below. So a few days ago, we covered the fact that Copete 7 Kimmy on Twitter leaked that Time Spy Extreme of a 1490 was scoring over 19,000 points. Now, I personally think that that is a very impressive score. That is an absolutely huge leap in performance. And indeed, another Twitter user, AGF, even states that control on a full 8102 piece of silicon, so we're going to assume just for now that that's a 4090 Ti, I was scoring over 160 frames a second in control with ray tracing enabled and DLFS. Now, just um, to put this into some level of context, there was apparently two variants of AD102 used in the 1490 being tested. Um, I was told that the full-fledged variant has 96 megabytes, and then a cut-down variant seems to have 72 megabytes. I had at least two individuals tell me this information, and one of them also told me that the full uh, 19, sorry, the full uh, 96 megabyte variant was also tested. Um, with optimized frequency curves, most likely by some AIB. And basically, Time Spy Extreme in this instance was scoring closer to like 25,000 points, which again is just absolutely kind of mind blowing. Curiously, Copete 7 has actually put an update out, and they are now stating that I know some people are disappointed with the 19,000 score. I mean, I don't know anyone, to be honest, that's disappointed with 19,000 plus points for a 4090. I mean, I personally think that score is just bonkers, but that's just me. But they also mentioned that it was being run with low TGP, low frequency, and an L2 cut. So basically speaking, there is a ton of room left in the tank. It's going to be very interesting how these cards end up, because obviously, at the end of the day, the higher the clock frequency, you know, the more heat and all of that stuff, but it's going to be very intriguing. He also mentions, though, of an AD102-450 A1 piece of silicon. He says that he doesn't know what the name is. Now, there's certainly a lot of intriguing variants, of course, of RTX 40 being tested right now. And I've personally been told that one possible lineup could be AD102-300, which is the RTX 4090, which has got, of course, 24 gigabytes of memory. Nothing new there. Then the 4090 Ti, which has 24 gigabytes of memory, also is AD102-350. Now, this is where things get kind of intriguing. I was also told AD102-400 has 48 eight gigabytes of memory, but it does seem to be focused on Quadro. I was told as well that the clock frequencies will be lower here. Basically, this is going to be more of a workstation card and so on and so on. 
Finally, there is the AD-102-450, and this could well be the Titan. But I have to tell you guys that I'm not 100% certain that this is true or not, because there is some conflicting information. Another source has told me that, and I think I actually mentioned this in a previous video, that NVIDIA are somewhat considering making the 1490 Ti just not be a name, and instead... The 1490 Ti essentially becomes the Titan, whereas another source is telling me that NVIDIA just doesn't really want to utilize the Titan branding anymore. I honestly feel that it's most likely going to be this, if this rumor is true. I want to stress this. Hopefully we can get some clarification pretty soon. But basically, I was told that if the 1490 Ti does exist, then it's going to have a small cut in SMs compared to the Titan. But clearly, the big difference with the Titan is obviously going to be the memory configuration. This is not a card. I'm sure some people will buy it for gaming, but it's not really designed as a gaming-first card. It's, you know, for 3D usage or whatever. Personally, I don't really have a problem with the Titans existing in terms of, you know, I'm sure that there will be a market for it and prosumers will absolutely love the card. But let's just be honest, even with a couple of SMs disabled, the 1490 Ti with 24GB of RAM is going to absolutely just destroy games at 4K. Like, this thing is just going to be ridiculous. I can't even imagine, to be honest with you, what is going going to be the future of PC games by the time RDNA 4 and RTX 50 release. You know, the performance is just going to be absolutely ridiculous. And now we're going to shift our way to AMD, as there has been a very interesting thing which has happened, and that is that AMD has kind of done an ipsy. I'm sure most of you are aware that NVIDIA have been doubling, quadrupling, and God knows what else down on streaming technology. And obviously, AMD have also released various things as well. And basically, they have um, accidentally published a teaser which shows AMD noise suppression. I don't really need to explain this too much to you guys because it essentially works almost identically to that of RTX voice, at least according to AMD. Now, I've got a level with you guys. Our actual source told me about this over a week ago, but um, yeah, basically I just haven't done anything with the information. However, I was given a couple of small nuggets regarding how it functions. Now, AMD themselves do mention that it basically utilizes AI, machine learning. And to my understanding, from what I'm told, this will only, at least currently anyway, work with RDNA 2 based GPUs. Now, I'm hoping, I really am hoping that that information that I just told you guys is wrong, and that it works with something like Vega, you know, discrete Vega GPUs, or RDNA 1. But, to my understanding, at least right now, it only functions with RDNA 2. So, for example, if you have like a, you know, a 6700 XT, you're good to go. But if you have a 5700 XT, it just will not function. I believe that one of the reasons for this is because, and if it does use AI, there were those additional, um, basically, ML instructions that were added onto the GPU. It's still utilizing the compute units of RDNA 2. Obviously, um, AMD's tech does not have tensor cores, but yeah, it's pretty cool nevertheless. Also, uh, a small update um, from a slightly different perspective for AMD's GPUs. What I can tell you guys is that Radeon Super Resolution is also going to be receiving an update as well. So this will basically be eligible for RDNA 1 based products, so for example the RX 5700, as well as RDNA 2. Um, there are also going to be some other very intriguing updates as well, and I'm trying to get some more information and clarification as to what those are. So hopefully in the next couple of days, I can release an updated video on some extra information. And speaking of interesting information or extra information, I want to discuss with you guys really briefly some very interesting things that I was told concerning Intel. Now, I'm not going to go into a whole spiel about Intel's ARC. I'm sure most of you are aware of it at the moment. And there's a very interesting video, actually, 
on on uh, Linus Tech Tips. I don't usually watch many tech channels, if I'm honest with you, but a couple of people were really recommending that I did check out the Linus Tech Tip video for um, Intel's Arc, and I actually would encourage you guys to check it out because it's got a couple of Intel employees, including um, Ryan Trout on the channel. And I think the verbiage that they use and some other discussions that they have are quite intriguing and perhaps will set you up for what I'm about to say here. So there's a couple of very interesting things I was told about ARC. Now, as I'm sure most of you guys know, Intel are in a chicken and egg situation. What I'm about to say is not exactly surprising to you, but drivers take quite a long time to be optimized. This is one of the reasons that DirectX 12, for example, is doing better on Arc than something like DirectX 11. We've known about this for ages now, and it's not really surprising when you think about it from a logical perspective. NVIDIA, AMD have had literally years to work on their drivers, and now, well, yeah, Intel are in this position. But interestingly, I was told by one source that Intel are essentially going to help to break the chicken and egg situation by basically just, let's just say, um, providing incentives to laptop manufacturers and system integrators. I'm told that there is a lot of cash that Intel will be flashing, especially to integrate discrete Arc graphics into laptops. Um, and really, when you think about it, it just makes sense. Intel at this stage needs to just build a large install base because obviously the more users have a specific architecture or, you know, whatever, it basically encourages developers. I'm also told that Intel are going to, and this is not, again, very um, surprising information what I'm about to say, but Intel are going to be doubling and quadrupling down on its development programs and developer assistance. So that's not too surprising. What is curious though, one of my sources late yesterday actually told me that there was a possibility of an ARC refresh. Now I have to say, I really did not believe this information initially. I was like, an ARC refresh, really? Um, but basically I was then told that Battle Mage is probably delayed I decided to do a bit of due diligence and reach out to a couple of people, and it does seem like Arc is going to receive a refresh. And this does seem to be penciled in essentially around the time of CES. The thing is, though, well, it doesn't seem to be based on the desktop. It seems to be a mobile. So basically, um, it's Arc mobile refresh, with Raptor Lake H, and this is going to launch sometime in January, uh, sorry, December this year, or January. There's not a huge amount of additional information I have on this. Um, I, According to the source that initially told me the information, not the one who provided me some updates, but I believe that the number of, for example, execution units remains the same so for example it doesn't have a bunch of additional execution units it doesn't have like you know major changes to the architecture i would presume though that there may be some optimizations to improve clock frequency um i'm going to be very interested honestly if they do the, you know release this it might make sense because to my current understanding um at CES, that's when NVIDIA are going to be announcing its RTX 40 mobile parts. Now, the thing is, um, I know NVIDIA in particular, and this actually circles back a little bit to the Titan information from earlier, as well as NVIDIA's overall decision-making, it's still, NVIDIA are still not 100% certain as to what AMD's plans are, to my understanding anyway, for its various SKUs. They have a basic understanding, but basically AMD and Intel, sorry, AMD and Nvidia are caught in a game of brinkmanship. Um, but either way, RTX 40 is almost certainly going to be seeing a mobile launch early next year. And of course, we all know that, well, AMD are going to be doing much the same. And I think that their mobile focus parts, especially the APUs, are going to launch again uh, for AMD 
early next year, basically around CES, they're going to be announced, maybe launch, you know, that month or possibly February or something like that. So I think Intel launching some type of update for its graphics on mobile makes sense because, well, just in terms of performance, they actually do have a prayer of being reasonably competitive, especially if they do undercut um, or, let's say, heavily subsidize the pricing of its of its products. It's going to be very interesting to see. I'm still quite happy that Intel are launching graphics, but, yeah, obviously at the moment, it's weird to say, but Intel are the underdogs. Anyway, guys, I think that's just about it for this particular video. It ended up being a little longer than what I anticipated, honestly. And yes, um, I am still getting over the plague at the moment, as I'm sure uh, many of you are aware. I kind of got the, you know, the coof. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm mostly over it. Um, but I'm still not 100%. So I think the next couple of days I should be, well, normal again. So, take care of yourselves, have an amazing day, and bye for now.